Welcome everyone to our episode 27 of the podcast Cultivating a New Generation. Today I am honored with the presence of a spiritual guide, Susan Dembres, and she is going to speak to us about how to learn to use your spirit as guidance. We are going to use our energy into really giving us the, the guide, the portals, the doors that we many times don't pay attention to and understand many of the signals of the universe that we are being encountered, but many times we don't have the eyes open. So we don't have the eyes open because you have to open up your spirit. And to begin with the topic, please, Susan, can you introduce yourself and just let us know about your story and how you arrived to this uh, new path? Absolutely. Thank you, David. I'm so happy to be here talking to you today. Um, my name is Susan D. Cawson. Uh, the Demris was my maiden name, so I know you pulled that off of Facebook, yeah. but that's okay. I'm Susan D. Cawson, and I am in Michigan in the USA, okay. and I have a business here called Healing Methods, and Healing Methods is uh, just offering a lot of different energy healing modalities. I myself am a clinical hypnotherapist. I'm also a psychic medium, so I offer spiritual guidance to people that need help along their path. And uh, I'm a Reiki master, and I also have been trained in Bali, Indonesia, in an energy healing modality known as Siwa Murti. And we, my husband and I, are the only two people on in this area of the country that know and have been trained in Siwa Murti and are now teaching it. So we have a lot that we bring to the table. He is also a reflexologist, and so we are just having the time of our life right now, offering all these wonderful healing modalities to everybody. But um, I want to thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this conversation today. It's my pleasure. And, and we need to start enlightening people to know more about this spirituality path that nowadays for me, it is a pleasure to see more and more people more in the, I think that, or I feel that in the US is waking up a lot of people. I haven't seen it in other countries. Although, of course, many other countries have the same people uh, waking up, but I have seen more people now. And this experience of, the, of COVID has made me more aware of where are the spots where people are awakening, because we really pick up the energy from people and we start knowing them ourselves through the, through the social media. We just attract the people. No, when we are open to this, those channels and now science that I study science. So now I can see that they are merging the paths and they are arriving to the same conclusions in, in different ways. No? Yes, I think that COVID really opened our eyes to the interconnectivity that we all have energetically with each other. And COVID was something that, you know, wasn't prejudicial. It, it affected all of us, no matter where we were, what walk of life, how old we were, what country we were from. And it was a way of kind of, you know, waking us up to the fact that we all want, desire, and need the same things in life. We may approach it differently, but we all want and desire and need the same things. So it kind of, in my mind, it gave us an opportunity to see our similarities beyond our differences. Yes, this is the first time that the world is coming together because we are understanding everyone, wherever the country is, wherever the language is, we empathize with people that also pick up the disease or are struggling because of the lockdown measures. Anything that is happening, we are sharing it all. And it mm -hmm. is, this is the first time I think the world is sharing those kind of emotions and probably that's why we are opening more uh, ourselves to that spirituality path. No? And how beautiful is it that through all of this, we have been 
driven to use technologies in order to interact with people um, at a distance. And now it's interconnecting us even more with people all around the world. You and I right now being in different countries and being able to have this beautiful, intelligent conversation with each other about this subject, it shows us that you know there's an awful lot of connectivity that's happening. I didn't think that I could do my healing from a distance as well as it's, it's working out. And I'm doing hypnotherapy. I'm doing energy work at a distance. And I am building a beautiful community of healers now around the world. And uh, the more I connect with people outside of my country, the more I see our similarities and how we're all hearing the same message. Like we all have little satellite dishes up and we're all picking up on the same message that is meant to heal the world and take humanity to this next phase. And so it's very exciting to me to see that even though I hear people speaking in, you know, different tongues and in broken English from around the world, we're all giving the same basic message. Yes. And, and I think that the message is we are all connected through the energy. We are all connected and we, we want the same things. We want to, to enjoy health. We want to enjoy connection. We want to bond with other people. We want to know their stories. And through their stories, I, we also want to heal the past, the future, and the present, no? Uh, what can you tell me about the therapies that you give in, in the way that you connect those three phases of time? How do you connect people with their past, their present, and how can they change the future by connecting those two uh, different time zones for well, people come with uh, all kinds of needs for healing. Some people, it might be um, they injured themselves or they had some kind of surgery and they need healing. Okay, that's that's more acute. We go in and we can do energy work on that. Some people will come in for guidance sessions and they'll say, you know, I just... <sighs> I just feel so overwhelmed right now. And I just feel like everything's against me. And they, they feel very much like a victim. And I help them through the guidance sessions to reframe the things that are happening in their lives, to give them a new perspective, to give them a deeper understanding of knowing that you signed up to be here. You wanted these challenges in order to make yourself a better soul. And therefore, you don't have anybody to point a finger at but yourself for choosing to do this. And you really aren't alone. And uh, you aren't at the uh, whim of society. I empower them by showing them how everything that happens in their life really begins with the energy of their own thought, their self-talk, their thought about the world, and how they choose choose to respond and react to everything around them. It's very easy for us to say, well, I'm, you know, this is because of that person or that event and to push it off on everybody else and then just sit there feeling like a victim. But what I love to do is I love to be able to turn the tables and say, no, in actuality, you have choices in every situation as to how you want to react and respond. And your choice then dictates where you move from here. Now, occasionally people will come in and they'd say, I'm doing all the right things. I'm thinking all the right thoughts and I'm reading all the right books. And I know all of the concepts that you're telling me, but I still don't understand where the negative thoughts are coming from and things of that sort. Then I know that it's something that's been written in their subconscious mind. Then I know it's time to move into the hypnotherapy. Now we have two minds. We have a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. Your conscious mind is connected to your brain. It works with you on trying to figure things out. You know, how do I get through this situation? How do I determine what to say or do here or there? But your subconscious mind, that is your spirit, your spirit that has been impressed by everything along its journey since the beginning of time. Oftentimes people will have responses and reactions to things that they're not happy with, but they don't know how to make it stop. Well, it's because the subconscious mind, which by the way, always wants the best for you. I always have to say that it will sometimes think that by having you react and respond in a certain way that it's protecting you. Here's an example. Let's say that there's a child 
let's say when you were a child, two years old, and you don't have any conscious memory, because that's way be before your memory, at two years old, you witness somebody getting brutally attacked by a dog. But now at your age as an adult, you can't remember that ever being something that you experienced. But all you know is that every time you go to somebody's house and they have a dog, you have to have them lock it up in another room. You are just so terribly uncomfortable with dogs, but you don't know what's driving that behavior. You see every single thing that happens to you since the beginning of the energy of your spirit has made an impression on your subconscious slash higher self, and it makes decisions based on that information. So it may be saying, oh boy, David should never go near another dog because we know that he had this experience and it, he could have this experience in his life. So what does it do? It goes out of its way to make you terribly uncomfortable whenever you're in a situation where you're exposed to a dog because it thinks it's protecting you. But as a hypnotherapist, I can go in there and say, hey, you know what? David is very disrupted right now by the fact that he can't be anywhere near a dog without freaking out. So we would like for you to comfortably, quickly, and eat in concert with the conscious mind to resolve the, situa the situation because he's an adult and he can take care of and protect himself. And then the subconscious goes, oh, well, why didn't you tell me that? <laughs> And it goes ahead and it makes the changes that are necessary so that the behavior is modified. Mm -hmm. That's a very beautiful way of explaining it, how our childhood memories get imprinted in that subconscious mind. And many times those are the limiting beliefs that, that we reflect as adults. And we, as you mentioned, we have some walls constructed because we don't know where it comes from and as you say we we do the right things but sometimes there's still the wall the, right we don't know that information and do you think that also that information could come from the fear or limiting also beliefs from the parents definitely i think come from the parents believe it or not you can actually absorb things when you are still being carried by your mother. I mean, it's the energy. Um, let's say a, a child is born into a family where the parents do not want this child. They feel they have enough children. They don't want to have another child. Before that child's even born, the siblings are picking up on the energy of this unborn child not being welcome in that home. That child may go through an entire lifetime of being mistreated by those siblings and by those parents, never understanding why everything they do is never enough. Mm -hmm. Now, that story is my story. Mm -hmm. I didn't know until just a couple of years ago that mm -hmm. I was that child that was not wanted. And I found this out directly from my own mother. And it all, and to some people, they would say, oh, that would be devastating to find that out. But for me, it was actually peaceful because for finally I understood this is why no matter what I said, what I did, how I acted, I was never good enough. Mm -hmm. Now I understand why my siblings never had a relationship with me. I was not welcomed in that home. So the energy of thought in my mind is the most powerful energy in the world. Yes. You can say the right things, you can do the right things, but if you are thinking negative thoughts, you are creating an energetic field around yourself. And of course, that negative energetic field is going to affect anybody who comes near you or has any associations with you whatsoever because we are all interconnected. So it's... Um, it's interesting. I don't allow myself to take information like that and go in a negative direction. I really take those adversities and try to learn from them because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that everything has divine purpose behind it. Everything. It's all meant for our highest and best. It's just a matter of how we want to interpret it. Yes. I also 
share that thought that we are in a school and we are all, always learning. So you can have a closed mind to learning and step wall after wall after wall, or you can open your mind and start learning and figuring out how to open or how to break those walls. Right. I have actually a, a little metaphor for that. And basically, I see that everybody's brains, everybody's minds are made of bridges and barriers. Bridges are the things that we believe we're capable of doing. Barriers are all of those things that have stepped in the way and made us feel like we are either not worthy or not capable of doing things in our life. And I believe that those self-imposed barriers are the only limits between where we are and all of the things that we want to achieve. It's just a matter of getting yourself to a point to where you learn to break down those barriers, realizing that you are the only thing that's standing between realizing any dreams that you want to realize. Yes. And what you mentioned about the these kind of connections that we have with our parents and the energy and the thoughts I also wrote it down in the in the book that I have behind me. And that book was a story that I created that is just based on fictional characters. But I wrote about these um, parents that have a child, but they start fighting with each other. And by fighting with each other and having those toxic energy, one goes to the addiction side and the other one goes to the... Um, to the addiction to the work, not to a drug, but to work. And they understand their story through asking their parents what happened with them and with their grandparents and the pain, and they start understanding all the stories. So it is also an epigenetic phenomena because it is also explained by science that we have seven generations back that is coming along and just building up either the pain or the negative emotions yeah. or the healing. But we are not chained, as you mentioned, we have breaches and we can detach from that pain that it is not even ours. It was Absolutely. just passed along. And that that's what people, uh, I think many times can understand with, with these uh, healing methods that, that you are doing, no? Can you yes. give me a story of someone that you can show people how can they break through with their own life situations and understand spiritually why it was happening? Yes, uh, well, so many wonderful people have crossed into my office that I've been able to help with all kinds of issues and addictions. And I will say this before I give any specifics, I have really found that no matter what kind of an upbringing you've had, no matter what has been passed through your family as far as behaviors and whatnot, you always have um, three options. One is to come out of a bad situation as a victim. The other one is to come out of that situation, learning how to victimize others and becoming an aggressor. And the third one is to be both, which puts you into a spot of being a narcissist, where you are a victim sometimes and a, an aggressor on other times. But the beautiful thing is that just like the body every seven years because of cells dying and new cells being born every seven years, we have basically a whole new body. Um, I believe that we can reinvent ourselves. And I believe, and I've seen this happen with clients who have come in. Um, I had a gentleman that was with me for a long period of time. Who, when he first came to see me, he was addicted to substance abuse. He was um, definitely an individual who wanted to have a relationship and have a normal quote unquote normal type of of life but um, he was standing in his own way he had created so many barriers in his mind because he had gone through all kinds of physical abuse he had been uh, tormented i mean it was it was a very sad situation where this individual actually 
had been an alcoholic since before he was born because his mother drank when he was unborn. When he was a child, they forced it down him just to make him drunk and to, to be amusing to them. Uh, so his entire life, but wow. within just a couple of months of doing hypnotherapy in order to help to reroute those negative thought patterns and doing um, you know, some talk therapy with him so that on a conscious level, he could understand how to reframe some of these things that have happened and see that the power really still is in him and that he just needs to push back on that and understand and accept as you were talking about generational issues that we don't come when we're born with a manual. <laughs> Our parents do the best they can, but they usually learn how to raise children by the way they were raised. And if they were raised in a very negative environment that promoted a lot of verbal or physical abuse, well, guess what? That is what subconsciously that child believes this is how you raise a child. And so um, it's really just a matter of rewriting things in that subconscious mind to understand that, uh, no, we do have choices. We are not necessarily enslaved by what's happened in prior generations, whether that be through behavior or through genetics. I believe that since your subconscious mind directs how many breaths you take every minute, how many times your heart beats, that with proper uh, training of the subconscious mind, you can heal physical wounds with your body. Yes. How, how do you explain the connection that we have through that subconscious and conscious mind when they synchronize and they understand what is happening? They communicate with each other and they listen to one another. I think a lot of it, you know, I, I don't really know anything outside of hypnotherapy. I'm sure there are a lot of different techniques, but uh, I don't know of anything outside of hypnotherapy that is as powerful as what I do. And um, that in and of, of itself is, is really interesting because how I got into it um, was an amazing path for me. Um, I had no idea what hypnotherapy was. I had never been hypnotized, but I am an intuitive and my guides told me to look into hypnotherapy. And had I not trusted in that message that came through, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And it was probably week two of classes when I went, oh, okay, I get it. This is very spiritual. This is 100% spiritual. It's about going to the energy that animates our body and readdressing it, having it shift the way it responds and reacts to things. Um, if I can just expand on that a bit, you know, we are made of two elements. We have the physical body and the energetic body. And when you look at those two elements that are there, you will see that you, you have to be grounded in both in order to move forward confidently in your life. And what I find these days with most of the clients that come to me is they've gotten so good at being programmed by society on what they should and shouldn't believe and shouldn't, shouldn't do that. They are completely grounded in the physical experience and they have lost total connection with the energetic side of them. So basically when I'm connecting the conscious and the subconscious, think of the conscious as the brain and the subconscious as the energetic spiritual side, I'm bringing them both to uh, an understanding that they can both accept. So if you're grounded in both worlds, that means you're here enough to know that you get a job, you pay your bills, you've got those responsibilities and obligations and you follow through with them. But when you are grounded in the energetic side of it, what it does is it, it allows you to tap into this inner guidance. It's like a GPS system within you. And it tells you when something's right or wrong, good or bad. Uh, it tells you what direction you should go in. It's that voice that told me to get into hypnotherapy. It's, it's, but it has to be heard in silence. And that's one of the things that society is not giving us a whole lot of these days is quiet times to contemplate, to ask those questions, to get that guidance. We are of the belief system, unfortunately, these days, if I'm not constantly doing something, I'm lazy. Yes, <laughs> that is but, so popular. Yeah, <laughs> but it's only in that quiet time that you're able to let go of the sensations of the body and connect with the spirit. Perfect example is 
you know that feeling when you first wake up in the morning and you might hear something down at the other end of the house and you can respond and react to it if you wish. But at this point, you're all mind and no body. You're so comfortable and the covers are just right and you're just the right temperature and you just say, oh, the heck with it. I'm going to go right back to sleep. That is when you are closing down the busyness of the conscious mind and you're going through the doorway into the subconscious right as you're going to sleep and right as you're waking up. And that's why a part of the treatment that I go through is I give people sound files that they listen to as they go to sleep at night. And it reinforces, um, it, it reinforces exactly what I'm telling them in their live sessions so that 21 days of repetition creates um, habit, right? So if they listen to it every night, the words in there will help them to come to a new state of relaxation in their life, dial back on the stress and anxiety, and it takes those words in and starts to carve new grooves in the subconscious mind, create new neural pathways so that we can start to train ourselves to think more positively, to look for the positive in every situation, and to feel empowered to lead the life we want and not feel victimized by society. Yes, completely agree. And um, from the science point, I, I can just tell that I, I was just reading an article where they were studying the, the neurons that were firing again, again and again. And the explanation that why do they have to repeatedly uh, fire the response is to open the channels enough and to release more neurotransmitters so that the response can start nurturing the new neurons that are going to be born. So that is the physiological explanation of the things, but so that people understand that there is a reason behind the repetition, because also we have gone to a part where culture wants instantaneous results and instantaneous things due to the velocity of how is changing everything. And also what you said, how do they program us to just buy certain thing and we will have the life that we want. That is also an external aid that we are using that is just going to last while, I don't know, one week, two weeks, and then your brain is going to return to your same state because you didn't create any habit because you were just relying on something external, no? On the program. Yes, absolutely. I believe that when people are constantly looking for things outside of themselves to complete themselves, it's like trying to pour water into a broken vase. The water just keeps pouring out of the bottom. So for a short time, you feel that splash of water and it feels refreshing and invigorating and it's exciting and everything's good and wonderful. It's very short lived. And once it's gone, you're looking for the next thing that's going to fill you up. The better idea is to not look at externally for those things that complete you, but find them internally. And one of the ways I love to teach people to do that is by teaching them that the same way that you go to a gym and you work out in order to build muscle, you can build that those new ways of thinking in your mind by repetition. And one of the ways you can do that is by using affirmations and really telling yourself, do, policing your thoughts and saying, every time that I hear myself say, I could never do that, I'm not good enough for that, stop, just stop immediately and go ahead and change to a positive thought, knowing that you are going to eventually get yourself stronger and stronger to where you're only going to be able to walk into a situation and see the positive. You won't even see the negative. I would love to share a really cool story about that too. Yes, yes, um, of course. I think most people use social media and they're on Facebook or they're at least familiar with it. Well, you may see things like this from time to time, David. Um, somebody posted a picture and it was kind of a riddle. It said, uh, what do you see in this picture? Do you okay. see a dog or do you see a scary clown? And I went, oh, well, I looked at the picture on my phone and I saw a dog. It was a black Labrador retriever and he was kind of sitting like this with his head up looking at the camera and he had a little gray on his snout. And they said, and I started reading the comments underneath and they're going, oh, 
oh my gosh, I saw the dog, but then that scary clown was so scary. I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. And so now I was sure I had to see that scary clown. So I was looking at that picture and I was making it bigger and smaller. And I'm just, I could not see the clown. So I made a mental note of who posted it. And the next day I went back and I, I'm going to find it today. I went back and I'm looking at it. I'm on my desktop. I'm looking on my computer. I couldn't find it. So I says to my husband, honey, when you look at this picture, what do you see? Do you see a dog or a scary clown? And he says, well, I see a dog. And then he looked at it and he went, oh, okay, I see the clown. And I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> he says, I've been looking at that picture for two days and I can't find it. So now he takes a pen and he goes, this is the face. This is the, and he's pointing everything out. I still couldn't see it. And all of a sudden my guide almost like hit me upside the head and said, hello, you've worked the last 10 plus years to focus on all that's right and good in your life and in the world. This is your reward. Yeah. I can no longer even force myself in many situations to see fault. When I'm in a room with a bunch of people and they start nitpicking about everything, I'm the one that walks up and sometimes that's not so popular, but I'm the one that walks up and says, yeah, but, and I bring out all the good in the situation. And some people are okay with that because they want to feel better, but other people really get very comfortable getting in that negative place and staying there and having lots of company with them in that negative place. But you know what? It's, it's much more enjoyable to be in control of your life, both now and moving into the future, and to know that ultimately the control is here <laughs> and that it's not in anybody else's hands. And the more we can edu educate people in that direction, the stronger the people on this, on this world, in this world are going to be. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> I also believe that when, when we have any situation, we can look for the learning. We can look for the meaning instead of just complaining. No. Because right. Absolutely. I mean, there are situations in our lives that can seem extremely overwhelming and devastating at the time. And it can be very difficult until maybe weeks, months, years later, you look back and you say, oh my goodness, but if that hadn't happened, all of these other wonderful things wouldn't have come into my life. With my career, it was the same way. I had four years ago, this past June, I got up in the morning, I had been having back problems for about a year and physical therapy wasn't helping. And I went to get in the shower and I collapsed to the floor. I lost all sensation in my left leg from my hip to my toes. I was um, shooting nerve pains down the side of my body. They had to take me out of the house on a backboard to the hospital. I was that bad. Um, they filled me up with a bunch of pain meds and sent me home the next day. I couldn't walk. I thought, how the heck am I going to get on with the rest of my life? I can't walk. But luckily, I was already quite along my spiritual journey. So in that moment, I said, I am not going to feel sorry for myself. I'm going to take this opportunity to fill myself up with as much positivity as I could. I was watching every positive YouTube, reading every positive book, watching every positive video I could while I was stuck in that bed all day long. And the interesting thing that happened is that I reached out to some of my energy healer friends and they said, we want you to see this chiropractor. We want you to see this um, acupuncturist. The chiropractor I went to see First time I went through the door, I was in a wheelchair. She ended up learning about my connection to spirit and she ran a wellness center. And she eventually said, you know what? I would love to find out how I could get you in the center, but I'm not quite sure how I would do that, how I would, how I would label you, but it's just, you have such talent. I would love to get you in here. That was the moment when that voice came through and said, say hypnotherapy. And I said, does hypnotherapy mean anything to you? And she said, oh my gosh, it's so funny. 
we had a hypnotherapist here and he left a few months ago to open a private practice. I would love to have a hypnotherapist here. And I said, whoa, don't jump the gun on this. I said, I have, I don't know anything about it. All I'm saying is my guide just said that to me. And she said, well, I think that'd be fantastic. Well, long story short, she pointed me in the direction of a school by, by the time two hours had passed, not only had I decided that this was what I was going to do, but I was enrolled in a class that started two days later. And it actually had started a couple of weeks prior. But when I was on the phone with the school and they said, oh, you'll have to wait six months for class to begin. My guide said, ask if you can catch up with the class. That's already in progress because they just started two weeks earlier. And I said, I'm just wondering, could I catch up with that class? And they thought about it and they said, yeah, you know what? We could do that. We could catch you up. So I immediately was in class two days later and it was even more magical than that because being in bed for so many months, I didn't have the money to pay for the class and I had to pay a third of my tuition in two days. I was running through my house, trying to find a checkbook that I could write something against my, my house, a home equity loan. And I found an envelope with $500 in it. Wow. <laughs> I remember in that moment, I just looked up and went, well, okay, then. <laughs> everything, and that's one. the thing. When everything falls in place and it feels easy and it feels like you're, you're flowing along, that's when you know that you're in that right space. Anytime yeah. it, you have to struggle and put effort into something, that's when you know that you're paddling against the current. That's when you know that it's time to get in touch with your energetic spirit and ask those questions and receive the direction. Nice. Um, how did you were able to open your intuitive side or when, uh, when it happened since you were a child, this, this, this voice was louder or you didn't listen. Can you just let people know? Okay. Let me know? <laughs> well, you have no idea how interesting the story is. Um, are you familiar with the term walk-in? Yes, of course. You know what a walk-in is? I don't think you understand the term the way I'm using it. Um, a walk-in. Uh, or walking outside. Right. Okay. Well, a walk-in is a term they use to describe a soul that wants to come and have a human experience, but doesn't want to go through birth and childhood. They want to come in and hit the ground running and start doing their thing right away. They have a mission, a mm -hmm. mission to get here and to help the planet and the people of this planet. Well, I walked in 13 years ago. It was an overlap. So it didn't just happen where one soul left and one soul came in, but the soul that was born into this body was suicidal, was not happy was filled with sadness and wanted to leave. There was a soul to soul agreement and the outgoing soul said, I need you to wrap up some things for me. And if you wrap them up, I will give you my body. The incoming soul said, great, but I need you to start going in this direction because that's where I'm headed. That's the overlap. And then eventually, bam, it, it crossed over and that soul left and I was left behind. So my husband has been married to me, quote unquote, for 40 years, but he's actually been married to two different souls in the same body. Wow. <laughs> now that's going to really push a lot of your listeners. Yes. Um, yes. The but I feel like if spirit led you to ask the question, then I was supposed to answer that because there have been people that have asked me that question and then in the end have found out that they in fact have gone through the same transformation. For a while, it was like I had two personalities in me. I had two voices in my head. One was of one personality and one was of another. I didn't understand what was going on. It was very confusing, but then spirit laid it all out for me. So when I walked in 13 years ago, I felt a need to expand in my spiritual side. 
I had been born and raised Catholic, had been feeling a little uncomfortable, like I wasn't feeling fulfilled. So we started to explore spiritual churches. I ended up uh, in a unity church where I'm very involved right now and lead weekly meditations and, and do t- you know talks and whatnot. But yeah, I went, that was when it, it happened. And I, I took classes in order to reawaken myself because when we're born into this world, whether we come into an infant body or an adult body, we are born into amnesia. We don't remember our purpose for being here and we have to connect energetically to be reminded of that. So I went through six weeks of mediumship classes. And in the end of six weeks, I was standing up on a stage giving messages to crowds of people. It reawakened that within me. Prior to that, I had the usual, like most people, now and then you know something before it happens, but nothing really astronomical. But now I have an ongoing relationship with my guides, with the angels, with you know my relatives. I go to funerals and the dead person is right next to me saying, please tell my family this, please tell my family that. Um, So it's, it's been a real, real blessing. The only downside to it, which, because everything has a little bit of a downside, I suppose, is a lot of the people that knew the last person that inhabited this body aren't necessarily open and accepting to what I'm saying and doing and thinking, but that's okay. Because now I have a whole new circle of people that I'm working with in order to help this planet heal. Wow, that's an amazing story. And now that you mentioned that, it was really, really funny. But since we started the the episode or since I met you, because this is the first time that we met, I felt the energy very, very flowing and very... As you mentioned, the purpose is so, so driven and clear that everything just flows. Yes. Everything just resonates. And I have never felt that in, in, in people or in, any, in anyone. So when you speak, I, I can really understand why it happened and, um, and the purpose. And, and I know that you will have a lot of impact in the people that you are helping. And now the the only question that I have is what happened when those two souls were making the agreement and you were having, as you said, the two voices, how did you handle those, that situation? I have to say it was pretty bumpy. And most of the people that I have met since uh, coming to an understanding with all of this that also have gone through it, there have been very few of them that were able to maintain their marriages and whatnot, because think about it, it's an entirely different personality. Um, my husband, I'm sure he can hear me through the wall. My husband is a saint. He's an absolute saint because he went through both of these personalities and there was a big clash. It was very chaotic. It was very difficult. Um, I found myself at one point just curled up in a ball in the basement, just rocking from side to side saying, breathe in, breathe out. I I was really felt like I was losing my mind, but then slowly things started to make sense as, as the two souls started to part. And I didn't have all of that confusion going on in my mind. It was hard for me to wrap my head around, but as you know, David, I'm sure spirit speaks through people. And I had people that were saying to me when I'd say, I can't remember any of my childhood. I can't remember this. I can't remember that. They said, wow, you have all of the signs of being a walk-in. And I said, what's a walk-in? Oh, well, I have a book. Let me give you this book and read it. And when I read the book, every time I turned the page, it was, it was like an aha moment. I was like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, but it was still hard for me to comprehend. But when it finally finally was understandable to me to where I could accept it was when I was at a spiritual event. I was one of maybe a hundred people in an audience and there was a medium up on the stage who was giving messages and she knew me, but she didn't know I was a walk-in. And she said, Susan, I have somebody here who would like to connect with you. Will you receive this message? And I said, absolutely. And she said, she says, her name is Susan. Do you know a Susan in spirit? And I remember I looked at my husband and I went, and he looked at me and went, is he, he caught it right away. And then I, I didn't even realize it out loud. I went, oh, and the whole room turned around. And I thought, 
oh my goodness, spirit is outing me in front of a whole room of people. They're going to think I'm out of my mind crazy because <laughs> the next thing she said was, so who is this person to you? What is the relationship? Oh, yes. It, no. <laughs> so this is what I said. I said, okay, she is the soul that was born into and inhabited this body until I walked into it a couple of years ago. Mm. Now I was in a very spiritual crowd. So some of the people went, oh, but the rest of them went, what? <laughs> so there was a social after this event. And at the social, I had several people come up to me and want to continue the conversation later on down the road. I found that at least two or three of the people I spoke to did determine that they themselves were walk-ins. Spirit wanted me to reveal myself in that surrounding so that those people could have the assurance of knowing that they weren't going crazy, that this was a real thing and that they were going to get through it all right. So there are a lot of people that are going through this and a lot of very young people coming into this world that are challenged with speaking and with interacting with people because this is their first time on this planet and first time in a physical body. And they have come here as wise leaders to try to help straighten out the mess that this world is in. And they can't necessarily relate to speaking with vocal cords. They're used to speaking telepathically. And, you know, they're being unfortunately labeled as having issues you know, this child has this disease and that child has that disease. But the reality of it is they are so highly evolved, these souls, that they just are having a difficult time adapting to a physical body and a physical life. But they are going to do great things for the world as they get older and they learn to cope with dealing with this physical body. I have um, met a lot of them over these past few years, and I encourage the parents to not see them as damaged or broken, to see them as so enlightened and so evolved that they're just having a hard time relating to the human race. Yes, I relate to that. Actually, I wrote also about that child that it's an indigo child and has that energy in the in the book so i know that these kind of souls as you mentioned they are coming now in these small bodies just sort of saying and children i, I just actually my daughter is also very awakened in that way in the emotional side and she struggles with the technicalities or with the program and I just tell her well I just insist that she doesn't have to go to that school because it's the old ways and she needs a different kind of education and she when she speaks she has had some uh, sessions with the psychologist that they are just prepping them to the return to classes because they were a lot of time taking classes in the screen and now they are just engaging again with social skills but she had a lot of things to say that she didn't allow the psychologist to speak and she was just <laughs> picking up the ideas so quickly that she didn't have words to say no so I was just she's thinking. very lucky to have you for a father <laughs> thank you very lucky. Yeah, I, I have a, a, a little story too, which, um, you know, is, is so beautiful in that respect. I had gone over to a friend's house and um, they were telling me I had never met their little boy, but the little boy was like two or three years old. And they had said that he, he doesn't speak. He will only eat certain foods. He, um, he can't be touched in any way. He doesn't like to be held. Um, and the doctors were diagnosing him with all, labeling him with all these things. Well, we were over there and I was talking to her from across the room and he was sitting on the floor playing. And while we were talking, I felt my spirit guide step up to my right shoulder. I felt his energy and I thought, well, that's strange. It wasn't like I was doing a reading or anything. I felt his presence sitting next to me on the couch. 
And I looked over in that moment and that little boy that was playing on the floor, he looked right next to me. He -hmm. picked up a toy, he came over and he climbed onto the couch next to me, right where my spirit guide was. And the next thing you know, he climbed onto my lap and his mother stopped speaking. And she said, he, 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 he doesn't do that. I said, what do you mean? He doesn't do what? She says, well, first of all, he never goes to strangers. He never brings them a toy and he certainly never sits on their lap. She says, I don't understand what's happening right now. And I said, he saw my spirit guide. They conversed telepathically. He was told that I'm safe. And he came over and got on my lap and her mind was blown. I said, this is what I mean. Your child is high functioning, very intelligent, beyond our understanding here in this plane. And in that moment, it really opened my eyes to these children that are being diagnosed as being on the spectrum um, as the fact that there is nothing wrong with these children. They are so highly advanced that we don't even understand it. Totally, totally agree with that because they just have a different kind of energy and they they are higher. So higher vibration, they, higher vibration. Yes. And they they are trying to teach us, but we don't seem to be open to that because we are programmed. We are ingrained and we have a lot of habits that are there fighting with the other energy. No. So Absolutely. that leads me to, to share with you the, a question that I think that will help a lot of people to understand how can they lose those program way or habit way, because many people right now, more than ever, I think, they are trying to see a different profile and a different way of living, and they are going to design their lives in a in a completely complete different way, but they are afraid because they know the safe, they know the comfort, and they know the the beliefs that they they just inherit, no? Yeah. Well, first of all, in order to start going down the right path, turn off the news, turn off the TV, expose yourself instead to all of the positive, uplifting, inspirational things that are out there. David, you and I have both dedicated our lives to putting information out there, but there are many, many people that have done that. They need to start to expose themselves to the things that are singing to their souls. You know, the old, uh, be what you want to see in the world. You know, mm-hmm. you have to, you have to absorb that. You have to eat that all up. Second of all, they need to understand that, um, it, they really do have a choice and Empo- empower themselves to make decisions in every moment based on what's going on. They can determine how they want to act and react. Somebody can come up and, and, you know, shove you in the shoulder as they walk by you. You can choose to get in an argument over it, or you can choose to walk away and say, wow, I feel bad. They're having a really bad day and let it go. Which one of those two scenarios leaves you at a higher vibration? The second one does. So you have choices in every moment how you want to do that. Trust in that divine guidance that's within you. Take time to be in silence every day. Get silent, listen, ask questions, see where you're led with those understandings. We have an inner guidance within us. If you are searching for your life purpose, I can tell you it's the easiest thing in the world. And you'll have people that'll say, oh, that's crazy. Here's why I say that. We have been given a beautiful gift. We've been given a guidance system, an inner GPS, and all we need to do in order to find our life purpose is gravitate toward those things that bring us joy and that ignite curiosity and passion within us. That is guiding us step-by-step to where we're meant to be. If you say, I don't know what my purpose is, but you know, That's very interesting. And I'm kind of curious about that. Curiosity is one of those tools that's meant to draw you in the direction of where you're meant to be. And there's not just one ending point. I have had 25 different career paths in the lifetime of this human body, 25. Originally, I thought, what a failure. 
Come on now, pick something and stick with it. But see what I do now with guiding people and counseling people, I didn't just read it out of a book. I've had all of those experiences firsthand. I feel so qualified to help people regardless of what they're going through. And I still continue to have crazy life experiences that are helping me to relate better to other people so that I can help them along their journey. So it's really about feeling empowered, connecting to your energy, asking those questions, fostering that communication and exposing yourself to positive, positive things. You can train yourself to only see the dog and not see the scary clown. Yes, beautiful, beautiful way to come to almost uh, the closure of this chapter and to leave people with that, with that taste that we can create our own bubble. And I just did a video two or three weeks ago about that about creating our own bubble, creating our own environment, protecting our energy, having those moments with silence. And that's the only way you can listen because with so much noise, mm -hmm. there's a lot of distractions and a lot of negativity that you can fall very easy to that. Yeah, for but, sure. But as you say, we always have a choice. Yes. It is not that we are closed in as people want to think no we can be in lockdown but the lockdown of our mind we just place it ourselves <laughs> that's exactly right exactly right see yourself as the person that has evolved in spite of what you've been through and not because of what you've been through we can use our past as an excuse for creating a future that we're going to be unhappy with, or we can use our excuse to propel us into the future we want to have. And, you know, if, if you were brought up in a, a loving household, wonderful. If you were brought up in a not so great household, become what you don't want to see or evolve into what you want to see, you know? So say, I'm not what I am because of it. I'm what I am in spite of it. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful way. And also I can share just one story that I had with, with my daughter also that she was telling me uh, that she doesn't like to do some things because I, I, I spoke about that. Probably she is vibrating another level of energy. So, and I just told her, well, what do you prefer? Do people tell you what to do or doing what you know you have to do? So you, you can just choose. Your life can be easy. Your life can be difficult. If you choose to listen what people tell you, it can be really difficult. If you really know what to do, you just do it. If you follow those things that ignite passion and joy and curiosity within you, I'm telling you that you can have the occupation, the life, that you want, the bills will get paid, and you will never ever have to think about retirement. Because when you do what you love, there's nothing you will do better. And when you do your best, you will always be compensated for what you do. So I, I have five grandchildren, and I had this conversation with the oldest yesterday, she's 10 years old. And I said to her, just always let your inner compass guide you. Don't let society tell you what the definition of success is, because success isn't about making a lot of money or having a high powered job. Success is about doing the things that you enjoy and being compensated for it. And when you do that, you will never work a day in your life. You will never have to think about retiring. You will just move forward with a spring in your step and a smile on your face. Yeah. That's what we want for all the people. That's what we are here. You bet. For. Yes. We are here to join forces and we are here for people to listen. And how can they find you or where can they find you if, if they want to look for more information about you? Absolutely. Um, my website is www.healingmethods.org. 
And if you go to healingmethods.org, not only can you find out about the services that I provide both in person and at a distance, but I also have been writing for years and I have many of my writings posted on the website. And I say to people, when you're going through a difficult time, go to those writings, look at the different titles, pick out the one that speaks to you and read it because inevitably spirit will send you directly to the message that your soul needs at that time. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you very much, Susan. I really, really enjoyed this talk. And I know that many of the audience of the podcast are going to resonate with the information and are going to look for more. So probably we will see each other again. <laughs> that sounds wonderful, David. Thank you so much. This has been wonderful and enjoyable. I, I just love your energy. Thank you. Thank you, Susan.